Hey everyone, Mary from SVG Cuts here, and I'm here today with some really fun patriotic summer projects to show you. And my favorite part of this, maybe is surprising, but it's this bunting, flag bunting banner. I just think it's so super festive, and I made it pretty large. You could also shrink it down and make it a little smaller if you wanted to. You could hang it off your mantle or just anywhere you can find a space to just hang it. Because I think no matter where you put it, it's just so festive. So I actually found this ribbon at Hobby Lobby and I just folded it in half and I put each one of them together with a brad and I just stuck the brad right through the ribbon and I think it's so cute. And you could even do it for Halloween, use Halloween paper, Halloween colors, or if you're having like a girly birthday party, you could use the colors of your party like pink and green or whatever. So I just think it's so cute when I see these on people's houses, you know, on the outside. I just love it so much. So I hope you have fun with this as much as I had fun putting it together. So we also have our cute little fire truck, which is all cute and summery and patriotic. But of course, it could also be used for like a boy's birthday or a girl's birthday or what have you. So it's not that hard to put together and you just put all kinds of fun embellishments all over it. And then we've also got some cute little popcorn cups, which was an idea from Tinley on our design team. And I think they're really fun because, you know, you could use them for whatever. I just thought her idea of little mini popcorn cups was really cute. Because, of course, you could just go, you know, grab a big bag of popcorn, throw it in a big bowl at your party. Totally cool. Or if you want to make it a little more special, if you have some fun paper laying around and you want to make little cups, I think it's fun and it just makes it a little more special and festive. And especially for kids, you know, ooh, I get my whole entire own cup of popcorn. It's kind of exciting. So that's fun. So we also have a cute little card and I used a Dalmatian to go with the fire truck. And of course you could, you know, make them brown, make them a, you know, just a regular dog, not a Dalmatian. So that is cute too. And of course you can use all these elements separately on other, other projects as well. You know, if you wanted to make a, a Dalmatian, make them a little bit bigger and put them on a little gift bag or whatever you can think of, that'd be really cute too. So finally we have a cute scrapbook page. And it just uses one simple 4x6 photo, super easy to go. I went to my local one hour photo place and I just had it printed and it was literally like 15 cents. I actually used my change purse to pay for it. So pretty quick and simple, just order it online, pick it up on your way home from somewhere else. And you can let your machine do all the work of cutting out all this fun stuff to put around it. And you can pick out your paper, or you can totally change it up, you know, use a different caption and use it for a completely different holiday or birthday or whatever. So the paper that I used this time is obviously so festive and so fun. And just like last week, it's also by Doodlebug Design. And I got this little mini pad and I pretty much used all my paper up here. But as you can see, it's really playful and colorful. And I wouldn't really say vintage at all. It's just nice and clean and modern and bright and cheerful and happy. So I also treated myself to their little embellishments that coordinate with it, which are super cute. And I need like a washi tape support group because I got the washi tape again and I just love it, but I, I never know where to use it. So I need to figure that out so I can use my adorable little washi tapes. So I have all my pieces cut out to show you these three-dimensional items. So let's get started. So let's start out with our flag bunting banner. And I went ahead and cut mine out a little bit smaller. And if you wanna make yours smaller, I put some directions in the PDF for how to do that, super simple. And as you can see, it's really just one piece, two pieces, and then the bottom piece is split into two. So as you can see, I already went ahead and accordion folded all of my pieces. And you wanna make sure that they are going in the same direction, for example, they all start by going up and up and up. So obviously, if this one was going down, that wouldn't really fit together properly. So normally I just, you know, just fold it with my fingers, no big deal. But this time, since this is so much folding right here, I wanted to be sure that each little piece was really perfectly folded and nice and crisp. So I took my bone folder, which if you don't have one, you can get one for a couple bucks at any craft store or, you know, probably just a pen or something would also work. And I went ahead and I just creased each of these only on this little tiny piece here. I didn't do that with the other ones because they're just easy to fold by themselves. So in order to put this together, you could probably figure it out if you needed to. 
I'm going to start by joining the two pieces on the bottom together with this little side tab, which is only on one of them. And I just want to glue one right to the other, being sure to line it up as perfectly as possible. And as you can see on each of these tabs here, there's only one little score line, and that's because it's only there as a visual guideline. You don't actually need to fold it. You don't want to fold it. You just want to be able to see it when you look closely. So all I'm going to do is go two at a time and put glue on two of these tabs. And I'm just going to look at that tiny little score line to help me line this up perfectly. Give it a chance to dry. And then I'll just line up the next one and give it a chance to dry. Now I can fold this over and I can continue holding it so that it's being held in place as it's drying. And then I'm just going to make my way down by doing two more. And this is the technique for the whole entire project. All I'm going to do is just do this all the way down these two strips and then I'm going to do the same thing with the final piece up at the top. And you know, I'm doing my best to line it up as best as possible. If it's not scientifically perfect, it's still going to work and it's still going to look cute. So just go ahead and go two at a time like this, all the way down till you get to the end. So I went ahead and finished my bottom pieces here and all that's left to do is the same exact thing all the way around the top. It's just on a slightly smaller scale, but it's the same principle. Like I said, just go two at a time and just use that tiny little score line as a guideline to line up the edge. And give it a chance to dry and line up the next one. And then just work your way down until your piece is all together. And you probably noticed there is a hole here on this corner and also on the other corner. So you can just use, put some string through that if it's on the end, or if you want to join two together, like I did here, I just used a brad right through the two holes of each of them. And just for a nice touch, like I said, I put this cute ribbon. I just poked a hole with the ribbon with something sharp and just put my brad right through there. So next for our little popcorn box, it's so crazy simple. If you want to go ahead and put the little stripes on right now, you can or you can do it at the end, doesn't really matter. So to put this together, all I need to do is put a nice little line or two of glue on this side tab and just bend it around and put it together. And the cool thing about this popcorn cup at this default size is that you can fit two of them on a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So if you do want to make a bunch of them, you can really use up your paper and be efficient. So all I'm going to do is put glue all over all five of these tabs here, obviously, and then just bend this down and line it up and let it dry. So finally for our fire truck, I've got all the truck pieces laid out here. And these three pieces form the back. So this guy here is the middle of the back. And then these two side pieces are kind of angled in on this side. As you can see, this side is angled, but the other side is kind of flat. So we want those angled sides going in towards the back, the very back of the truck. So we also have this part here, which is the lid, the, the, the hinged, the back of the truck lid. Then we've also got this part pretty recognizable as the front because of this little grill here. And then we've got this middle piece, which is going to go on the inside. It forms that little like neck of the truck. And finally, we have the bottom. So first, I'm going to start with these three back pieces of the truck here. And this center part of the back, we can tell that this is the top because this tab is a little bit larger than this bottom one. So this is the top of the center. And then these two pieces here, you can see that it's a bit angled on the side, and on the other side, it's flat. So I want the angled side, these both have angled sides here, 
facing the center. And we're going to go ahead and put some glue on these center tabs. So that way you just know that everything is starting to fit together properly like a like a little puzzle kind of. And I'm just going to do one at a time here, just give it a chance to dry. And make sure this second one is lined up nicely. So next I want to just do the same thing on the other side. And I'll just go ahead and line it up as precisely as possible. Give it a chance to dry and then tilt this second piece into place. So the back of our truck is taking shape. So let's set that part aside and take a look at the front. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started by putting some glue on this small tab and on this other tab right next to it. I'm going to give it a good chance to dry before I move on to the next one so that it doesn't slide out of place. Since I have it so nicely lined up, I want to make sure it stays that way. And I'll just do the same thing on the opposite side with a nice little thin, somewhat even layer of glue. And I've got it lined up real nice. And I'll just pop that second one into place. And our truck is taking shape here. So now let's go ahead and put glue on these two tabs. And just fold these guys into place here. And I'm just going to do the same thing over on the other side. I can get away with just a tiny little dot of glue, a nice little thin line. And just fold that right into place. So now we can set this part aside and take a look at the back. And I already went ahead and glued one of these down. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other, the other side. And over here it's the same thing. I just went ahead and did it earlier to save a little time. So now what I want to do is take my centerpiece here and as you can see this it's covered up by a blue panel but underneath is this piece here in the center. So as you can see on one side it's a little bit angled on the other side it's flat so the angled side faces the front of the truck. So what I want to do is bend these tabs the opposite way and I can go ahead and put some glue on all three of them and you can be a little more careful with your glue and kind of get a nicer more even coating than I just did but as long as you get the idea of how it goes together that's my my mission right now so my glue is not totally perfect but still going to work. So as you can see, I'm just gluing it from the inside and I just need to give it a second to dry because it is not staying together because it's not dry. But you can see where that goes. And then I just want to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to bend these tabs the other way and I'm going to pick up my lid here, my hinged lid, and it's going to go 
like this. So what I want to do is obviously put some glue on my tabs. And you really, if you can, you want to get your glue kind of all the way out to the, the little corners and the edges here. And just pop that into place. So I'm just making sure that it's lined up real nice and straight. The edges are all meeting each other nicely. And our truck is definitely taking shape here. So now I can go ahead and put the back onto the front, which is going to be like this. So what I need to do is put some glue on these two tabs here. I've got the back, like the bed of the truck in my hand. So I want to put glue on these two. And I just want to line these up one at a time here. Oops. So I'm doing the long one first, making sure it's lined up real nice. And then this little triangular tab next. And now I just need to do the same thing on the other side. So again, just put some glue on these two tabs. And put the long one in place first. And give it a chance to dry. And then place the smaller one in place. So now we're pretty much almost done here because this hinged lid doesn't get glued down. It's just loose, so you can put little little treats or little goodies or surprise in there if you want, or just leave it empty as like a little party decoration. And as you can see, the bottom just fits right on here. So all I'm going to do is put glue on all of these tabs, and I think it's important for your glue to go all the way out to the corners. Like you don't want to put too much on because then it'll ooze out the sides, which you can always wipe off before it dries. But you want enough glue, obviously, so that it holds. And you definitely want it all the way to the corners so that the corners don't start falling apart. And if possible, you also want to do it as quickly as you can so that it doesn't start to dry before you get a chance to put your pieces in place. So I'm going to start on one side and just line things up as I go. And give everything a little bit of a chance to dry as I work my way to the back of the truck and make little adjustments as necessary. So if you see that it's not lining up perfectly, just kind of scooch it into place because it's still drying and you still have a little time to make it perfect. And now, for example, I've got a little bit of an overhang over here and I can, I can kind of pull it to adjust it as it's drying, but if it dries, you can always take a little sandpaper and rub it on there to finish it off even more perfectly. So that's the body of our truck, and this piece here just gets glued right on top like this. So all I'm going to do is just put a thin, even layer of glue on this whole entire thing, especially out to the corners, and put it on. You might want to put it on first so you can see where it goes. As you can see, it's a little bit more angled in the front than it is in the back. And then you can go ahead and put your panels in place. And then you can see where the tires go, because behind the tire there's a little bit of a border of this panel and this panel. 
So each tire is four layers thick of paper. So as you can see, when you pull up your tire piece, there's 16 circles. So there's four, 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 and four. And then finally for the ladder, let's take a look at how that works. So as you can see, there's two little pieces like this. And they started out flat, but I folded each of them like this. And then there are four pieces like this. So if you want to go ahead and emboss one of these, I used a wood grain embossing folder on the top layer, which looks kind of cute, but it's also cute just plain because it's so tiny that it doesn't really need much else done to it. So as you can see, I went ahead and put some glue on that long side. What I want to do first actually is put glue on all of the rungs of the ladder and I want to sandwich them together doing my best to line them up really nice. And then as long as it's still drying here, I can go ahead and put the edge into place. So there we go. One side of the ladder, done. Now I can just reinforce it with another rectangle. And I'll just do the same thing on the other side by putting glue all the way down both of these and just do the same exact thing again and place this on top as well as the final rectangle on top of that. So there you have it, super fun patriotic projects for Memorial Day through 4th of July or just all summer long because summer is kind of a patriotic decor kind of season. So I hope you have fun making these. If you do, we would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog or Instagram or Pinterest or where, wherever, what have you. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.